Hey everybody, I'm Zelda Master and welcome to Oceanhorn 2 Knights of the Lost Realm. This is a game I've been excited for since its announcement, as I was a huge fan of the original Oceanhorn, Monster of the Uncharted Seas. I even did a Zelda-like video about it way back. I had so much fun playing the game, I played it on mobile devices, and well, now we got a sequel, or more so a prequel to the game, as this game predates 1000 years before the events of the original Oceanhorn. But regardless, I want to let's play this game for you guys as they took that top-down Zelda-like style that Oceanhorn 1 had and made a full-fledged 3D Zelda-like game and yeah it looks so good and promising for what it is especially because it is for mobile devices but I'm playing this on the Apple TV as I want to get that console-like experience and showcase it to you guys sadly it's currently only on iOS platforms but hopefully it will be later ported to other consoles as that's what happened with the original game it was later ported on the Switch on Steam on a lot of consoles, even the PS Vita, so maybe we'll get Oceanhorn 2 Knights of the Lost Realm on the Vita, I doubt it, but maybe the Switch, and if that's the case, that will be amazing, but regardless, currently it's out only on iOS devices, so I'm going to be playing it on the Apple TV, and I hope you guys are excited for this, so let's go ahead and jump into Oceanhorn 2 Knights of the Lost Realm. At the end of the world, I write this paragraph, to be the last for Realm of Arcadia. They fought valiantly against this end, but they are powerless before the fate set by Kronos. The sands of time have run many times since these events were set in motion, and none who took part in the downfall of Arcadia was left unchanged. Ah, an observer. At a time like this, your appearance is surely not a coincidence. I will show you what transpired, but for you to understand the whole story, you must experience it yourself. This I can tell, though. It is a tragic tale of two eternal souls. It began on a dark and stormy night, and all within a lost realm. He said he would meet us here. <laughs> Is it really you, Mesmeroth, old friend? When I got the message, I could not believe it was from you. He should not suffer because of my mistake. This child is for you to raise, Master Mayfair. Take good care of him. Eighteen years later is where our adventure begins, as the hero. The baby that was actually given from Mesmeroth to Master Mayfair. Yeah, that is the hero of this adventure. And well, now that 18 years has passed, it's time to begin our first quest. Here we are on our first island within the game, very similar to how the original Oceanhorn was. You'd sail from island to island and explore them. Kind of reminds me, obviously, of the Wind Waker. But still, Oceanhorn does it in a really nice way. And I cannot wait to start our adventure. As you can see, our hero looks a lot like Link. And this looks really exciting to explore. So this is Outcast Island, where our first task awaits. And speaking of... Retrieve a lockbox, stolen from me many years ago by pirates. Its contents are vital for your knighthood. Good luck, Master Mayfair. Alright, thanks Master Mayfair. I like when he signs off he actually says his name out loud, but yeah, that's because the game has voice acting with certain characters and main cutscenes, similar to how the original game had uh, voice acting within the major cutscenes within the game, but as you can see, yes, I can move the camera around and jump and uh, do so much that a normal Zelda 3D game would do. Not necessarily Breath of the Wild, but other Zelda 
games like Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, all of those games, I get the vibe of those games in this one, and it is so beautiful, like it's so nice to run around with this hero-like kid that looks exactly like Link. Uh, it reminds me of Link in every way. He acts like Link, he sounds like Link, we pick up hearts. I mean, what more could you ask for if you're looking for a Zelda-like game? This is perfect, and it's hard to believe that this is all on mobile devices. Like, this is truly the next generation of mobile gaming. And here we got a Bloodstone. Uh, as you can see, it reflects light as in there's blood in it. I don't know what that means, but hey, there's blood in it. And this is actually similar to what was in the original Ocean Horn. It's a collectible that we're gonna be getting. And as you can see, we even got EXP because there is RPG elements within this game. So not necessarily Zelda-like in that department, but everything else is so Zelda-like and I absolutely love it. Like, I'm not complaining. Uh, the thing is to playing this game though, is currently it's only on iOS devices. I can't wait until it's on the Switch and everyone can play it. And sadly, with how you have to play it is you have to subscribe to Apple Arcade, which I'm not, you know, necessarily advertising Apple Arcade, but it is worth it just for this game. But anyways, this island belongs to the outcasts. Okay, let's do this. And here's our first enemy, Ascarabara. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to target on it, but I guess I can't until I get a certain item within the game, and that will be the shield. I find that really weird how I'm unable to target on enemies yet, and we're gonna get hit rather easily because uh, we don't have our shield. Our shield is gonna be very useful, but we'll be getting it within this video. Obviously, played this game a little bit beforehand. I only played enough for the first episode, as um, I wanna make sure I can 100% this game when uh, taking it on, as I do want to treat it like a Zelda game, as it is so Zelda-like. But first, let's just kind of explore the Outcast Island uh, by killing these Scarabaras. Um, as Master Mayfair told us, this is a task for us to hopefully eventually become a knight, as that's what this um, hero wants to be, and I believe his name is actually just Hero. Like, he goes by that. But okay, we got a little achievement. You know, every nook and cranny. It's rewarding you for treating this game like a Zelda game, which I find really cool. And I love how if you roll when you jump, it's kind of like, um, you know, Link from Majora's Mask, how he would do really cool flips as he would jump. I'm getting so many different Zelda vibes. I would say the biggest Zelda vibe I get from... Um, you know, a particular Zelda title would have to be Scoured Sword. But one thing I really dislike is the swimming within this game. They took, you know, notes from Breath of the Wild, and yeah, you lose stamina so quickly as you swim. But hopefully, uh, we'll be able to upgrade that. I'm actually not entirely sure if you can upgrade your stamina or not. Um, but we'll figure that out. As you can see, we climb, and it does utilize stamina by doing so. This, again, reminds me so much of Scarred Sword. Let's just go ahead and drop down over here. It is so nice, though, to play with a controller, because when the game first came out, which was on the 20th, as that was the iOS, uh, I believe, 13.0 update, uh, I tried playing it on the iPhone, but I, I couldn't get myself to do so. Uh, so I had to wait until it came out on this, which is the Apple TV, and that update was like two days ago, I believe like on the 26th or the 25th, and yeah, now this game is worth playing, because yeah, I, I, to me it's not worth playing on a touch screen, but obviously if you don't have an Apple TV, I still advise trying to play this game if you own uh, an iOS system, as it is worth playing, like I said, but okay, so we do have a musket as well, which we can shoot things down, might as well take it out, and you, know, you just want to shoot these trees like that, and I believe we get a reward if we pick that up. It's more so leveling up our collection. Everything you collect has levels. When you kill enemies, it has levels. Uh, just overall, there is an RPG mechanic in that sense, but I don't know how helpful it will be. So Master Mayfair wants us to head in here, which is the keep out. <laughs> you want to keep out, but no, we need to head in there. It's a bandit area, but uh, we're not going to do that yet, as there's a couple more things I want to do. And as you progress through the game, it auto saves. I don't think you can save on your own. It will just kind of do its own thing. But let's read this. Uh, I hid small treasure in the jars. Make sure you break them. Okay, hell yeah. So this is like Zelda where you can just break the jars and it's really satisfying. Also, we can run like this. It reminds me literally, the way he dashes is straight up Scarred Sword and the way the stamina depletes is also Scarred Sword. Like, it's the exact same style if you ask me. I can't help but think of Scarred Sword when I do this. Uh, hopefully though, we'll get more stamina to run faster because the dude barely runs. Like, that's not really much. He like sprints for two seconds and then he's out. But okay, let's hit this switch. This will move this block. I legit feel like I'm 
solving a Zelda puzzle. All that's missing is the little, you know, fanfare, but uh, that's not in the game. But every time you solve something, the way the camera changes and lets you know what you've done is just so Zelda-like. And that's obviously why I made a Zelda-like video on the original game. And uh, I love his expression too. Uh, he does sound like Link as well. I can't help but make Zelda references. I'm going to continue to do so throughout this entire Let's Play. That's why I'm even into this game and wanting to showcase it to you guys. As If you're a Zelda fan and you're looking for more Zelda content, I really feel like this game is for you. Um, it's especially for more old school fans as you're going to be collecting items and, you know, having that Zelda experience most Zelda games had until Breath of the Wild. But Breath of the Wild still Zelda-like. It's just, you know... It's not like this where you have to auto jump or you have to collect certain items and backtrack and just all of that that made Zelda what it is, I feel like. But I, I still, Breath of the Wild is my favorite game, so don't get me wrong. But okay, so this is a bomb of sorts. As you can see, there's a cracked wall. Yes, you can only assume what we're going to do with it. It's going to blow it up. I don't want to stand next to it because that would hurt me. And just like that, we have found the Shoreside Cave. Now, I feel like this is going to be super useful um, in the... Uh, upcoming parts of the game as there is a switch we want to press but uh, I can't actually press it right now here let me go ahead and first pick up this item we'll see what we need to do I think I need to place something on the switch or uh, let's go ahead and actually head around there is a ball yes there we go we want to put this ball right here on to the switch it kind of reminds me of like chica orbs and uh, you know kind of solving that kind of puzzle but okay let's go ahead and now place it right on top like so and our first shrine just kidding but this is actually a very interesting area within the game as this will be a giant teleportation device uh, i love how they do have technology within this game i feel like in the original ocean horn they didn't but look at this room it's it's insane and all the other areas are blocked as you can see we can't explore those but this should be a, like a warp type uh, place that you can just kind of jump from level to level so here we can see a glimpse of all the levels within the game I don't actually want to go all the way down because I feel like that spoiled the game for myself and you guys because I actually don't know what's left within this but I had to show this off early on and it is something we can do and like I said I'm gonna 100% this game I'm gonna treat it like how I normally do Zelda games where I'm not gonna use a guide I'm gonna make my own guide as I play along uh, I did this with you know Skyward Sword when it first came out with Breath of the Wild with so many Zelda games, like my 100% Zelda Let's Plays are me figuring out the game by myself because I'm too stubborn to ever look anything up. It's funny because that's what I do for a living. I help people within Zelda games. That's like the majority of my videos, yet I could never get myself to do that. I like, no, I have to figure it out myself. Um, so I'm going to have a lot of fun figuring out how to 100% this game, but it looks like we're going to get something rather special. I mean, this whole cave isn't really that secretive if you try exploring the island. I feel like everything will be kind of easy to find. I don't think the game developers tried too hard, but look at that. We got ourselves a health container, uh, you know, pretty much a heart container. Collect three of these and you will get a new heart container, but we actually... Are treating these containers like heart pieces so it's more of a health piece and then eventually once we have three as you can tell because we have three parts of our heart we'll be able to heal up fully but i just realized i didn't get hurt but it looked like he got hurt there uh these little glowing items don't worry they're not uh anything important to 100 the game because they constantly respawn you can always collect them but okay i don't mean to hit these guys with that i actually want to kill these scar bars like this because uh yeah, might as well just get as many EXP as I possibly can. And with that, I guess we can kind of just head on out of here. Now, the character can, like, jump over things from time to time, but it has to be, like, a specific ledge or something. So, yeah, don't try climbing anything that doesn't have vines. That's something that I feel like is more so Scoured Sword-like than it is, um, you know, Breath of the Wild-like. Because, yeah, rocks like this, it will not work or anything. Uh, though it would be nice, but <laughs> it makes sense with how the game's structured and it will make sense in the puzzles. But okay, here is the old pirate hideout. So let's go ahead and jump and just slash our way down. I could have used the ladder, but I'd rather skip it. <laughs> As you can see, I'm already on the bottom. And yeah, this is the old pirate hideout. Um, it is essentially the tutorial of the game, you could say, because it's very, very short. Um, so let's start off by jumping up this. 
and doing some cool flips and another cool flip as we jump i absolutely love that if you spam the roll button you'll actually use your stamina so you get like a free dodge or a roll or whatever um within the game but if you use it often you'll start to lose your stamina rather quickly and there we got the wooden statue i believe that was in the original game they kind of act as cash uh it's it's a unique way to pick up cash so you pick up like the necklace we picked up this stone wooden owl statue of sorts and you don't keep it in your inventory it just immediately turns into gold that you can end up using so yeah let's go ahead and now pick up this har i can always use that some herbs let's move on to this enemy a cactus or cactus or whatever oh it's burning yeah burn baby will it die oh no immediately went out I believe we can get we can cause ourselves to burn as well and if so we'll be on fire until we start rolling a bunch and then you can easily get rid of it but okay so i mentioned the shield earlier and that is an important item we need to get but to do so as you can see this area is blocked off let's go ahead and press this switch and well i will open up an area to a chest but don't fall actually no okay it's easy then I, th I thought it was gonna close we'd have to place something on it that's something also very zelda like but i guess not yet i'm jumping the gun and there we go we got ourselves the shield this is just a normal shield that belongs to the knight of arcadia in addition to letting you defeat enemies or defend yourself against enemies attacks you can also use a shield to push away obstacles that's a key point and we also got a new level up so we're now a cadet I believe with each level we're going to have a new name that will fulfill our ranking as uh, now we have our HP restored as well. But yeah, with finding items, with killing enemies, with everything you get EXP. Obviously killing enemies is a very slow way to try to level up, so you don't really want to do that. It's not like a Final Fantasy game or other RPGs. But yeah, take out your shield and voila, just like that you'll be able to push the giant boulder. You just have to have your shield out. And now with our shield out, when we find enemies we'll be able to actually target on them like you would in a Zelda game, the whole Z targeting mechanic. I just call it Z targeting because it, it, it started in Ocarina of Time and you had to click the Z button and the Z button was very unique on the, the N64 controller. But okay, I think I just messed up because this switch, as you can see here, when pressed, will will have this to go down. But if I go off of it, we have to watch this scene and yeah, that's kind of annoying. But okay, we can pick up this actually. So I didn't break everything. Well, I can break all the jars. I don't even need a jar i need this barrel and let's go ahead and place it on and there you go so yeah this game is so nice to play on the controller as mentioned before i tried giving it a chance on the uh, iphone and i just could not but all right this is a good chance to use a new technique and that is if you charge up instead of doing a spin attack as link would do you do a set of swipes that quickly take care of the enemy and now let's go ahead and uh use our shield can i not yet target on the enemy for some reason I can't. Maybe it's something you learn. Oh, there we go. Now I can do it. So I have my shield out. I'm close to the enemy. It's really, really helpful because, see, he immediately blocks uh, as long as you're holding it. And you can really avoid a bunch of hits by doing so. So I do suggest targeting on enemies when you're close to them. But, I mean, you can kind of play a bit recklessly early on within the game. And there we go. We got our first small key or an old pirate key to the old pirate hideout. Okay, they're very specific keys, and there's a bunch of them, though, to keep the Zelda vibe going, but let's go ahead and pick up more of these. Again, these aren't that necessary. All of these will just be, uh, you know, not so uh, special items, just common items that you can get, stuff that will heal you. We got herbs, we got, you know, apples. All of this stuff is just works as HP uh, restoring methods, but let's just go ahead and now backtrack and use said small key this reminds me of like the the very small dungeon within phantom hourglass when you first start the game like how they fo force a tutorial on you and get you used to all of the mechanics when it comes to puzzle solving but okay let's go to now push this down and watch the gravity do its own thing come on kill that scarabara nice that wasn't bad so that was only able to kill one can i try to push this on them no okay well let's take our shield hit him keep our shield out as you can see it's blocking it, the animation isn't that special but Okay, now let's go ahead and charge our sword. I can't do it when I have my shield out. And then once it comes to me, hopefully I'll be able to hit it. There we go. Oh yeah, I love this attack. I would say the spin attack is still better. It's more iconic, but I'm glad they gave um, this character a more unique attack than what was in the original game. As I do believe the original game, when you charge up your sword, it was just straight up a spin attack. Obviously, I'm not hating on the game developers for copying Zelda. I love that they did that. Um, 
It's really nice, and I'm going to keep referencing it, but they, they made their own twist. They took the Zelda franchise and put their own twist, and I respect it for that, and I, I love Oceanhorn as a series, uh, and I cannot wait for, you know, what this game actually holds, but uh, I think it's going to be amazing. And I, granted, I feel like you have to love Zelda to love this kind of style, but... Yeah, I, I just feel the need to say that because while I do reference this game to Zelda non-stop, I respect what the game developers did. Like I said, I want more Zelda-like games. I'm not going to get upset that this game is so Zelda-like. I really hope you guys in the comments don't. I know a lot of people feel the need to defend Nintendo when that's the case, but I don't believe that it's really necessary. But okay, so keep the barrels away from the torches. Well, you know what? Screw that. I'm not going to keep the barrels away from the torches. I'm going to watch it burn because you do want to have this burn as it will act like a torch for you to then burn this up and wow we got a stupid achievement okay that's one thing i don't like about uh, apple arcade but hey we got more exp for it and that made us a junker so i believe now uh we'll be referred to as a junker when people speak to us kind of sounds like an insult i preferred cadet but i'm level three now so i'm gonna have to deal with it but uh, we have yet to speak to anybody as we haven't found any NPCs yet that we can speak to. But it will be soon. Um, so the music is changing and sounding more intense. Uh, we managed to get ourselves that chest just by burning that. Again, a very simple puzzle. I feel like everything is going to be very straightforward early within the game and uh, later even within the game if you just keep the whole Zelda puzzle solving uh, concept in mind. Because when I played the original Oceanhorn, I actually played it on mobile. I feel like a top-down game fits more on mobile, but I still used a controller, um, and uh, I had a lot of fun doing so. Uh, I ended up purchasing it, I believe, on my, uh, you know, PlayStation Vita. I feel like it was worth it. I even have it on the Switch, I believe. It's even on the Switch. I, I bought the game many times. I have it on Steam as well, so I feel like I'm going to do the same with this game when it actually comes out. But okay, we got ourselves the captain's key and the reason why is just i want to support developers i think what they're doing is amazing and ocean horn was actually like i believe it won like game of the year for ios device like it was the best game on ios platforms when it first came out and i know it's going to be the same thing with this one already the reviews look really good on the um you know app store when you go to download it and again i really really do recommend you guys play this e even if you don't have an ios device then wait until it comes out on android um Sadly, they had to do that, but okay, here we go. We have made our way to the pirate's treasure room, and luckily we do have the pirate key, but use this entrance only with the captain's permission. Screw the captain. I'm gonna unlock it regardless. I don't care. I just wanna enter, and well, uh, this is probably a good spot to maybe find healing supplies. Yep, hearts and whatnot. We got some herbs. They all look the same. You're just gonna call them hearts, and well, it's time to take on the first boss. I believe this is very reminiscent to a boss within the original Ocean Horn. Here's a chest that Captain or Master Mayfair has tasked us to do, or pretty much father figure who raised us since we were a young baby, since we were given away by Mesmeroth. I don't really know who um, Mesmeroth is. We're gonna figure out that again, but this is Galactos, a really disgusting looking octopus that really needs to brush its teeth and you're gonna see why but okay let's go ahead and do this so the game saved you want to make sure you dodge so you don't get hit um, this is where dodging is gonna be very very useful just continue to hit its tentacles ah, okay kind of messed up there but it's fine I can take a couple hits it does hurt actually for an early on boss if you ask me but once you take out all of its tentacles which we're almost there Okay, I got hit again. It's fine though. Now we can see its teeth and it has a bunch of weird magma thingies on it So we just want to constantly hit it destroy them as fast as we can and uh, Then continue with the battle. So again. Oh avoid. I actually wait. Did I shield it? No, you can't shield it. Okay <laughs> I thought I could but yeah, if you do lose a lot of HP, which we are uh, we could try other methods I want to try this uh, oh, never mind. He's gonna help us as you can see. He's gonna pick up a bottle. Whoa. Thanks, buddy Whoa, but don't okay avoid them. I believe these bottles will actually drop HP if you need them I'm hoping I get some uh, Maybe I won't but let's let's wait for this thing to attack us and then avoid it uh, Avoid its next attack when it does hit us. We just have to kind of bring down the tentacles once more and come on yes I got a heart okay now time to play reckless as I have a bunch of HP from waiting for it to chuck those jars at me and now it's time to end this I'm gonna do it with the real shebang let's go ahead and charge it up and attack 
Oh, yeah, wait. Okay, well, I ended up like, climbing on top of the boss. But there we go. We did it. <laughs> I mean, the animation is cool when it explodes, but it is a very hideous looking creature, to say the least. But regardless, that's the first boss, Galactos. So you got the captain's chest. Okay, sweet. Let's pick up this key to open up the lost captain's chest. Uh, and all of these challenges are mandatory at the moment, but I do believe there'll be side quests. I'm excited to see them. Ocean on one had so much to offer that I know this game will have so much. Even if it's short, it will be a great experience for what it's worth. But okay, Master Mayfair's lockbox, we did it! And just like that, it's time to leave the island and check out the next island within the game as I'm so excited to show it off. So here, it's very similar to the original game. Wait, why is the screen shaking? What the heck? This doesn't seem right. Wait, what? Is this island exploding? What's going on? Okay, I don't know. Again, like I said, the game has a lot of glitches at the moment. Um, so... And a lot of frame drops, whatever. Again, it's a mobile game. I am not complaining in the slightest. This, this is an amazing game. Uh, but this is how the original Oceanhorn was when traveling from sea to sea. Though this game is set to be taking place 1,000 years before the original Oceanhorn. So Oceanhorn 2 is a prequel, not a sequel. Uh, we're playing through the uh, past of Oceanhorn 1, which I find pretty interesting how that's the follow-up to their, you know, second installment. But, uh, yeah, we're just gonna head straight to where the map wants us to go, and that is to this island, Arn Village Valley of the Warden. So let's check this out. Ah, oh, and the music is so nice. But I'm really excited to show off one piece of music that I find absolutely amazing. It's, it's a nostalgic callback, I guess, for people who played the original Oceanhorn. Um, if you have, please let me know in the comments, and if you are considering picking up this game, kind of a lot of people don't have iOS consoles, so I don't blame you, but if you are, I would love to know. Again, I, I want people to play this game, because I just want the developers to know that this is a great game, and that they should continue doing this, even if it's similar to Zelda, that should not stop them from making games like this. I wish there were more games that were this, uh, inspired, but also original in their own sense. But okay, I'm excited to explore this island because a lot of things we could do as it is a Zelda-like game So there's plunds, tons, not plunds, tons to plunder. Uh, maybe I was going for that. Okay, whoa Okay, yeah, sometimes the character will continue walking forward um, And you have to like pause the game or walk into a wall for them to stop Like I I'm just pointing out the glitches just in case you come across them, but ignore them uh, This is still amazing that it's supposed to run on mobile devices like this, but I'm playing on my Apple TV I feel like it should play better I hope your trip went well. Did you find what I asked for? I forgot there's uh, voice acting. But yeah, I did, Master Mayfair. Here you go. Here's your lockbox. Don't know what you have in this, but yeah. We found Good. it in the caves. Now, let's head home. You must be hungry. Let's eat, and you can tell me all about your adventure. All right, sounds good. So, Master Mayfair is going to take when us back home to knight, food and oh. The contents of this box will be yours, son. Lucky for you, those pirates never got the lockbox open. <laughs> those are really bad pirates. That lockbox does not look that secure, Master Mayfair. Maybe they're afraid to break it. I don't know. Okay, it, it, the let's go through here. Okay, so yeah, we, let's just follow him, because if you try to run away from him... And people want to spend it outside. It hasn't been this warm for weeks. Sounds like he's complaining that people want to spend outside. But yeah, you want to follow him, because if you run away, he's just going to keep yelling at you to continue walking with him as you just want to make sure you read Jen has the been house. anxious to see you return he was a little worried about you to be honest so yeah, Jen was master Mayfair's companion say hi to him and come back to me and hopefully he'll be ours as he's just robotic oh, hey, you're back. And... I'm glad you've returned safely it was your first adventure alone after all and here you are unharmed we have every reason to celebrate tonight all right sweet we're gonna I mean yeah, let's celebrate with the robot. <laughs> he's my best friend, I guess. But okay, I'm gonna continue following him because legit, if I leave, he's gonna go mad. You know, I'll just show it off because there is a blood uh, gemstone. Home, home sweet home? Sweet okay, home. Cool, cool, I don't care. I'm just gonna Hurry go ahead up, and I'm waiting. Okay, yeah, that happens. Um, so I don't wanna keep triggering that, but let's get this bloodstone. And uh, yeah, the text says, look at how it reflects light as if there were drops of blood inside interesting I don't I don't know how blood reflects light in a 
in a different way, but whatever, I, I trust it, and it should hopefully act as something very useful the more we collect them, but I like how this is targeted like an enemy. We could fight this, this dummy right here. But anyways, yeah, okay, we have made it home. And You've only been gone for a couple of days, but it might be a good idea to hone your skills against the training dummy while I prepare some food. All right, sounds good. So yeah, now Master Mayfair will be preparing food at home. This is our house. I like how it's separated from all the other places within this village. Very Zelda-like as well, or really any video game. And whoa, he actually went in the house. The second I looked away, that's cool. But okay, anyways, before we head inside and call it a day, uh, you know, it was a long adventure. I want to explore this town. So let's start off by fighting this dummy. I don't really care. It's not that important, actually. It's just, I guess, if you want to get used to the combat within this game. But if you try to roll down areas like this, we can easily get ourselves, let's search, um, some more hearts and whatnot. Nothing too important. I want to actually see what we can find around here because there is a good amount of things so not up here though uh i'm gonna collect all of these little goodies that we find right here but let's actually head to the town itself as there is a ton of things we can get from more cash to even purchasing a small upgrade for our sword but okay let's kill this cactus right here um because why not what oh yeah it can disappear on us that's interesting why are you doing this and pop up wow what a interesting enemy okay let's watch where is it? Oh, look at that. It was just a pop up from underneath, like surprise. Okay, come here. Die. Okay, well, this is awkward. We have to wait for it to leave. I don't know if this is even worth fighting, to be honest. But, you know, any EXP is EXP, right? We just got plus one. So, yeah, enemies aren't worth fighting, actually. Don't treat it like a, a, a different RPG where you want to grind off enemies. At least not these enemies, maybe because they're very common. Hopefully later in the game we'll find other enemies as I do want to farm and see if I can get myself stronger than I should be. So there's a blood crystal over there, a bloodstone gem, or just bloodstone. I'll get used to naming these uh, items whoa. eventually. But <laughs> I like that. Whoa! <laughs> His uh, reaction is nice. So we got an ember. It's worth 50 rupees. So we don't really have the ember again. It's just going straight into our... Uh, rupee counter or uh, okay now nah, that's a problem money counter I don't know again don't blame me <laughs> I'm gonna reference Zelda because I can't help it but okay another stone right here I can't help it no no the game's doing it oh okay no don't do that so the game was literally walking on its own that's what I mean we're gonna run into these from time to time but I'm trying to I'm gonna try not to um, have it slow me down so yeah, I just had to like move or press pause or somehow just stop it. It's this weird soft lock to where just the character is not functioning properly. But okay, so we got a pearl necklace again and it gave us 75 rupees. Not bad. Let's jump down and see if we take fall damage. Nope. Okay, not bad. Um, here there's really nothing, but I do want to spend the rupees or the money <laughs> that I've got in coins, I believe is the name. Um, let's spend some coins. Over here, these vending machines you can buy stuff. It's a Genko vending machine. I'm, I don't know, I'm assuming it's like referencing Gen or Gen, Genko, whatever. I like how the NPCs will move a bit, but they don't speak like the main characters. So, hi, Junker. Yeah, sounds like an insult, but no, she's just, you know, referring to our current level name, which I find very weird. But I'm looking forward to seeing all the cargo ship arrive from White City. Our town is running out of supplies. So White City, I believe, is the main city over in the center of this island, which we will get to soon, and I cannot wait. But I came here for the vending machine. So what would you like to buy? I would like to buy the synthetic gen... Co. Shard D1C1 for 300 coins. So yeah, we bought it, and now we can actually put this on our sword. Did, did I quit? I got it, right? I think I got it. So let's go ahead and do this. Add shard, add it, and there we go. So I believe that when we charge attack, it will actually do something pretty nice. But let's continue looking through the houses, and the music still plays in these houses, but don't worry, something will happen. Oh, that was really weird how the textures loaded last second but I like how there's a, a, a specific language within this game that reminds me of Hylian it's unique uh, look at a bowl of ramen that's interesting but yeah I, I, I don't care again I love the Zelda vibes I'm never hating when I say that I feel like a lot of people look at it as a bad thing but I'm trying to make sure you guys realize that when I reference Zelda to this game that I'm not but okay wooden statue more coins I'm, I'm gonna get used to the 
the terms in this game. Coins is obvious. It's like in so many games. This is like the most standard way to call currency in, in RPGs or uh, is it actually? I don't know. Well, what is the more standard way? To be honest, I, I don't really care anymore. <laughs> We're just gonna go ahead and continue on. So let's enter each house, really. You know, in a Zelda game, this is what you would do. You would try to explore everything that we can, look through every nook and cranny, as the game literally gives you a uh, achievement for that. And, okay, nothing special in this house, though. So this is like the one house that we're not gonna find crap, but we'll find a bunch more in these other houses. So we entered that one, we entered this one. Here is another one, a rather abandoned looking house. This is where Jen was actually standing uh, outside of. And believe it or not, there is a chest. I love the lighting within this room as well, but yeah, whoa! <laughs> We got ourselves an innkeeper's key. So yeah, instead of him doing the expression that Link would do, I guess he's just doing the voice you imagine Link doing when he smiles and picks up an item. Um, but the innkeeper's key is something that we can't actually use at the moment. Uh, once we get a specific item, we will though, which I'm looking forward to and I'm looking forward to backtrack through areas and whatnot. Um, but let's pick up this. Nothing else too special within this, but worth, you know, checking out. I just want to show off all the houses, show off really everything within this game. Again, like I said, I'm going to be 100 percenting this game, so I have to, and, and I want to, so, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but in this house, let's see what's in it. And I love the way they look. I love how we can actually enter every house. You couldn't do this in the original Ocean Horn. And, oh, okay, that was weird. Kind of glitched through the side, but I uh, might as well pick up this stuff. This is very, you know beneficial when it's upgrading our soft drink level, I guess. Um, maybe it will just make drinking soft drinks uh, heal us more, but cause there are two ways to head up here. For some reason, I chose the not so smart way, but there is a secret, as you can see. Let's go ahead and jump. Oh, whoa! You can jump on a command? How do I do that? Wait, I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I actually didn't know that was a mechanic, so when I'm... Whoa! I think I'm not supposed to be doing that. Maybe you can jump on command. It doesn't look like it will get you across heights, but... Um, yeah, I just pretty much tried rolling. Huh, I have no clue how I did that. I don't think I can replicate that again. Yeah, maybe that's like something that's not supposed to happen often. I don't know. Either I'm pretty sure you can solve the entire game without jumping in place like that, as it doesn't look like it would be too helpful. But okay, we got one chest, we got another chest. Let's keep filling up our inventory with more gold or coins. Okay, gold is uh, what you hear in RPGs. There we go. The fact that I said gold on accident makes sense. It's gold. It's same thing, but whatever. Um, okay, sitting on the innkeeper's key. We have also the house here, which I wonder if it's the end. Oh no, it's more like a, a bar of sorts. You can kind of hang out. This looks so nice. I love the detail they put into this game. Here you can actually see, I believe maybe this is White City, a, a poster of it. And uh, this machine will have different things. This is more of a vending machine, literally. So we can buy pellets, we can buy soft drinks. I could maybe use a soft drink. I wonder if it heals me immediately. Oh no, it fills up my level up. So yeah, I, we'll learn about that as we play through the game. Um, here is a little bridge that we can help draw. Let's go ahead and do that. Jump around. Yeah, the running is so satisfying. I felt like the running in Skyward Sword was the best running Zelda had. It was only, it was only sec, only two games have running. This Skyward Sword and and Breath of the Wild, but when you'd run in Breath of the Wild, Link would go so fast, even if it was for a very short time. I feel like Breath of the Wild's run was much slower, and I love how this game, I just legit feel like, what, how I can't necessarily control him when I'm turning as well and everything, like the momentum he gets from running is so much like Skyward Sword that I absolutely love it. But if you choose to deplete all your stamina, you'll be punished, as it will recover really, really slowly. But anyways, with that bridge we just drew down and, um, you know, you can actually see a chest on the other side, and maybe we can use that key we got, but sadly, it is blocked from the bars over here to a slightly broken down uh, wall that maybe we could blow up or something. You know, we'll look into that, but at the moment, it doesn't seem like there's any way around here. So, we're gonna make sure to come back to this eventually um, and pick it up when we do get the chance. But let's go ahead and also check out this house. You know, I'm just gonna knock out all these houses, you know, explore every town I can explore. As you can see, there's a 
gem shard here and whoa how did that attack looked really badass so blow uh bloodstone can i do the spin attack no it'd be cool if you spin and he would do it but i guess there is no spin attack maybe we'll learn it later in the game i don't know but yeah we got that item as well and that's pretty much it for now around this town so maybe we can head back to master mayfair and let him know i want to kill this cactus um you know what? let me roll back and actually try to shoot it with this so, uh, okay does no damage essentially so not worth it let's get this one exp yeah i'm leveling up guys <laughs> not at all but okay i think there's actually one more house i don't know if i explored no i did i went in here and we did we go on the second floor i don't know if i went on the second floor though um i could check so we can just jump up here luckily so yeah you can jump in place in certain areas where he has to automatically do it and then i don't want to fall down i want to roll what the game denies me okay it's fine there's a little uh, ladder right behind here so i don't care i'll take the ladder instead then since uh, <laughs> we couldn't jump like that it looked like it, you were able to do it but yeah i don't know why it didn't work but okay let's go ahead and open up this door and Check out this room where, oh, nice, a more special looking chest, and oh, whoa, it's a miniature airship, which is just worth money, though. So even though it looks exciting, it isn't, it's just more gold, um, but yeah, here's a fridge. I don't know why I felt like hitting it, it's funny seeing a fridge in this game. They have, like, a more modernized, you know, style within this, actually, if anything, we're going to be getting something really cool that will fit outside of, you know, the boats and whatnot, so I'm excited to see... The technology of this game this era um and overall this world more explored because i actually haven't yet like i said i only played the first portion of the game and i'm going to continue playing it with you guys but wait search here what is here oh another gold piece which actually is gonna, a scrap metal which just essentially translates to more ammo so not bad but okay we're done with all of this we explored the town well enough it's time to enter the house and let master mayfair know that uh, we're ready to eat, so. Good, uh, you're here. Sit down when you're ready to eat. Oh, okay, I guess I have to sit down instead. That's how we'll land him out. Okay, Master Mayfair, and oh, look at what you made. Some steak, some just straight up lettuce and bread. I, you know, I'm not complaining. This looks like a better meal than Jen. He's he's eating nothing. Sucks for you, what are you gonna get, an oil change? <laughs> yeah, okay, I don't know why I'm making fun of him. He seems like a really nice guy, but okay. So, I guess there we go. I'm just sitting patiently until uh, Master Mayfair comes in, sits with me so we can eat. All right, there we go. <laughs> and that should do it for the first day of us, hopefully, gonna become a knight. Maybe today's the day. We're gonna figure out. But, if you couldn't tell by the music, it's actually playing the intro theme to the original Ocean Horn. Yes, your house theme, and only your house theme, has the original ocean horns theme which i find really cool and here's our character just sleeping on the bed waking up as it's a new day we ate we passed out we celebrated i guess and welcome to the tower near town bring the key to the gate from the chest so i guess this is our room and master mayfair put the chest uh, or put this chest with the key i guess yeah so we can open up old zelda fashion he couldn't just set the key on the table you had to do this master mayfair you had to right your obsession with chests man but okay this is for the arn village gate let's go ahead and utilize that but that will be in the next one as when we open up this door we got a lot to explore once we make our way to master mayfair so yeah the game is saving Pretty much it's time to end things off for this one. And next time, like I said, we'll be making our way to Master Mayfair and exploring on a new day within Oceanhorn 2. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this episode and if you're excited for this series. Again, check it out if you have an iOS device and join me on this Let's Play. Or just join me throughout watching until the game comes out for a console slash uh, system that suits you but anyways again thank you all so much for watching i'm so excited to play this game i love everything about this game even the main character reminds me so much of link with his get up uh, and hairdo and everything i can't help but think of breath of the wild link but enough zelda references anyways again appreciate you guys watching and i hope you guys are excited for more as i am beyond excited for this series and what's to come but as always i've been zelda master and i'll see you all in the next one bye